Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vince's Junk. Uh, first off, sorry about the uh, the mess on the bench. Um, I've been playing with things at the moment. Uh, this isn't what the video is about, but I'll just show you what I've uh, I've been messing with here. A friend of mine who's a guitarist um, asked me whether I'd build him a little um, fuzz face um, pedal. Just it's just a little switch box. Uh, just gives a fuzz effect um, for his guitar. I've built these for guitarists and things in the past to um, old 1960s designs and the problem is um, I'm starting to run out of the old uh, metal can germanium uh, transistors that these originally used so what I've done, I've, this is just something I've just knocked up um, I've been playing with over the last couple of days and this is basically, it's the little um, fuzz face circuit but what I've done is I've, um, I've put two little sockets in uh, where the transistors go and it's, it's wired for PMP transistors, you can also make an MPN version which came a little bit later but uh, this guy particularly wanted the original 1960s early 70s um, version of the fuzz face using the uh, PMP transistors like I said the original would have used uh, germanium transistors and uh, I'm starting to really run out of them so, as I was saying, I've just knocked this thing up so I can basically mess with some silicon PMP transistors and see if I can find anything that sounds okay in the stocks that I've got. And I mean, I have... This is my... This is my, um... <laughs> my, my vintage transistor stock, as you can see. I've got, a, I've got quite a few to be playing with in there. They're not all PMP, there are some MPN and there's even some diodes in there as well, but, uh... They are all 1970s vintage. I've got a load of these from a uh, retired TV engineer. So yeah, that's what I'm uh, I'm just playing with at the moment. Um, fiddling about with some um, guitar stuff. But uh, that's not what this video is about. Um, this comes back to my old uh, PlayStation 3. Which is working absolutely perfectly since the repair. I have been playing lots of my um, Tiger Woods PGA on it so much so, uh, my monitor's packed up. Um, the monitor I'm using with that um, PlayStation 3, it's, uh, well it was the top of an old um, information system and um, basically a few years ago if you went to the services you'd be able to um, go to a big console and um, it'd tell you what, um, like the local traffic information, where the delays were, you could put your route in and it'd show you where, whether there was any issues along your route and they got pulled out of service stations quite a few years ago and I ended up buying a few of them um, and I converted them into um, digital um, photo booths um, for a business venture me and a friend had going a few years ago and um, as part of that lot, I ended up with one of the top displays off one of the units. And like I say, it was this, it's a like 30 inch um, monitor. It's no tuner in it or anything. And basically all it's got is it's got a um, HDMI and a um, DVI um, input on it. And I've used it as a computer monitor uh, for quite a long time. And obviously I, using the um, HDMI I can plug my PlayStation 3 into it as well and it packed up um, a couple of hours ago just as I was um, right in the middle of a, um, a match on um, Tiger Woods and anyway I pulled my meter out and I think what's happened is the power supply here has uh, died to death now this, it's a bit strange, this is a cheap, I don't know where this came from, it came out of a box of crap um, you know, obviously it's one of these big boxes of stuff that I've bought and this was in it uh, it's run that monitor for a couple of years, I must admit. Uh, it's, it is a cheap Chinese thing. Um, it's tw it gives out 12 volts at 3.5 amps. Now, um, that monitor, I know, pulls about one point, uh, sorry, about 2.9 amps uh, when it's running. So this should be well within um, capability of running it. But I do um, recall it always used to run rather hot, this. And I actually, anyway, it stopped, and when I uh, I pulled my meter out, and I uh, I checked my meter on the um, end cable, there is no connector on there, because there's just a, um, a chop block uh, inside the monitor that the power supply connects to. Like I said, it was part of an old display system. Um, so anyway, I checked my voltage on there, and I was getting about 3.5 volts out. 
So I think um, I think the power supply has um, bitten the dust. And also, I don't know if you can notice this. If you look on the top of it, there. I don't know if that's coming out on the camera. There's a funny mark, kind of like etched into the top. Now I don't remember that being there when I uh, first installed this. I must admit this this power supply has not exactly been accessible. It's been like jammed down behind things. So. Uh, it does look like it has um, possibly got rather hot. Anyway, what I thought we'd do in this video is crack into it, have a look inside it, and see what's gone wrong with it. See where possibly we can repair it. If not, I'll just uh, I'll have a rummage in my stuff and just find another power supply. But uh, let's uh, have a look in this and see uh, see if we, can if we can discover what's gone wrong with it. We've also we've lost a couple of feet off it. I presume it just has two um, two screws, one there and one there. So we'll pop this cover off and we'll uh, try and get inside it. Oh, all right, okay, well, that's odd. Well, I was expecting to find a screw under there, but it's just just more plastic. So we see, I only seem to have one screw. Um, we'll get the screwdriver bit that will fit that. Where's my ah? That one will do. I think that should fit it. Oh, I better get the iron switched on as well. I might need the iron. All right, so let's take that screw out. Now there might be another screw under the label or something, but let's have a look. No, that's it. Just one one screw to get in there. That's yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, this doesn't look so good. Have you seen that? It's I mean, I mean um, we haven't got smelly vision, but um, dear me, I can s just smell like ugh, burnt electrics, and it's all, it, the actual plastic's melted there. It seems to have like the top of two capacitors actually melted into it. It's, it's these two, it's, that doesn't look so healthy. <laughs> that looks rather unhealthy. Uh, it is doming a bit as well, that one isn't. But it looks like them two capacitors have got very, very, very hot. I wonder if that's where the uh, where the issue lies. Also, the main smooth and that's unusual. But the uh, the main smoother there, the high voltage um, DC smoother there, that's actually domed. And it's not blown out or anything, but it certainly seems like it's um, it's domed up a bit. So it has. Oof, no, I didn't get a shock there. It just uh, it just broke through rather suddenly. It's uh, yeah, even the thermal. Um, horrible glue that stick everything down with um, even that seems to have broken up and uh, lost its lots of, lost its stickiness so this thing certainly has got rather warm let's try and take the board out of the um, out of the case and we'll have another look so you can actually see what's uh, failed in it it's obviously not completely failed because it, it was still giving out three volts so Let's, uh, let's get in here and have a good look, see what we can see. Well, uh, we've got some broken off bits of plastic, we've got liquid. Oh, and I think the liquids come from there. Have you seen that? That cap's actually... That's, that's not good. 25 volt, 470 UF. And the do it's not domed at the top there. Neither is that one. But it's actually blown the bottom... I don't know if you can see that. It's actually blown the bottom of the capacitor out without um, the emergency vent on the top blowing. Uh, we'll try and get this off its... Um, off its board and we'll have a look underneath. I wonder if I can just try changing them caps and seeing whether it'll go again. Well, I think we've got to pop these clips off to get that off the... Uh... Yeah, we've got to pop these clips off I think. And then we can um, get get the board off the heatsink. I'm hoping just to pop them off. Must admit I've not come across this type of clip before. Let me get hold of them with some pliers and pull them off. 
There we go, that's the first one off. Let's try this one. This one looks like it's melted. Ugh, there we go. Something's melted on it. Oh, it's like it's heat shrink. It's got heat shrink over it, I think, to isolate it from the um, heat sink. And it's rather well melted um, heat shrink by the look of it. So that's obviously been getting very hot. Let's have a look, see if we can get the board out. I'm, I'm obviously being careful with it because um, we have the potential that there's still a charge stored on that capacitor. And it's not fun getting a bite off one of them, I know. I'll just use this to see if I can. There we go, that one off. That's quite nice. The, uh, the mains is actually on two connectors rather than being soldered straight to the board. Hopefully we can get this um, PCB out now. There we go. Ugh, look at that. Something has got very, very hot. Let's have a look underneath. Jeez. You can see that there. I'm showing you that. The whole board there is carbonized. It's like the tracks have like literally burnt off the board. I was wondering whether I just swap the uh, the bag caps on this and give it a go again, but um, I don't know now. That looks pretty. Uh, that looks pretty nasty. Right, let's just make sure we've no voltage on that um, capacitor. We we'll get the old um, meter. Just so um, I'm a bit more confident handling this thing. So there should be a bleed resistor on it, but you can never be uh, you can never be 100% sure. So you're always better off um, just making sure. No, with nothing on that capacitor, it has um, it has discharged. Good. Right. There don't seem to be too much damage round round that point apart from them capacitors that have um, let go. But it's that that's concerning me here. Like I said, the whole board seems to be... Ah, there's actually components there as well. Let me get a... Uh, let me get something to clean the board up. Let's find my uh, little toothbrush. And I'll give the... In fact, oh, my little wire brush might be even better. Let's see if we can get rid of some of that carbonisation off the uh, off the board, and then at least we can see whether there is anything which worthwhile doing with it. Now, where has that gone? Nope, it's not in there. I will have to learn to be more tidy. Ah, there's my little uh, wire one. That's perfect for this. There we go. That's better. We've got this little wire brush we can um, just clean up that carbonisation on the board. If we're careful, we shouldn't do any any more damage. I just want to see quite how bad it is down there. Actually it's cleaned up. It's cleaned up all right. I think most of that carbonisation was just them resistors getting hot and burning that um, insulation underneath. So I wonder if we cut a bit of that damaged insulation away there and put some new insulation on the bottom of that board. That might be okay. It's certainly cleaned up all right. What we can do anyway is we can um, we can try sticking some new caps on it. That's not as bad as I thought it was. 
uh, we'll do a bit of a repair there and we'll um, we'll power it up and see what voltages we're getting out of it see if we get our 12 volts back it's probably it is probably beyond repair to be fair but uh, we'll give it a go and see if we can get a bit more life out of it I mean that main smoother there really needs replacing but what, what value is it 100 UF at 400 volts I don't think I've got one it's only just a little bit domed it's probably okay for the moment we'll try it we'll um, connect the meter up to it and see what capacitance we've got on it anyway and if it's anywhere close to 100 we'll leave it for now uh, obviously we'll have to change them caps there and then we'll um, we'll take it from there I think So I'm not going to spend a lot of time or effort on it, it's just not worth it, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely change them too. Let's try and get them out. Even the uh, solder's baked on this. I'll try adding some fresh solder, see if that'll uh, help it out. The solder's absolutely baked. Right, let's try this again. Ah, that worked. Let's try this other side. Some of it. Right, let's try getting you out. One problem with it is because it's um, it's literally so uh, so destroyed the capacitor. It's not going to be easy to get out. That side's out. There we go. That side's free. I think. Right, come on out you come. Yeah, that side's out, you see. It's just this side here is uh, holding on a little bit. Let's try just heating it. Oops. Right, let's try putting a bit more solder on. See if we can get it to flow out. We can always get rid of the excess solder afterwards. There we go, that got it. There we go, look at that. That's focusing okay. So that's the first one, it literally has blown the bottom out, but if you look at the top, the actual safety um, vent on the top's not even domed. So that's not a good capacitor. Um, let's have a look at the next one. And this one's the uh, same, 47 UF at um, 25 volts. And that's these two connections there. Again, I think we'll add a little bit of fresh sole to see if we can uh, see if we can get them out. Can you see what I'm doing there? Let's try getting you in a bit. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Right. Have a quick go. One of the problems when you've got stuff that's seriously overheated like this, it can affect the old solder. 
it can make it a right pain to uh, work with. Sometimes, in fact, it can be worse than really old solder that started to crystallise. I saw, you know, in fact, the thing that's worse is solder that's got contaminated when the battery's leaked, because it doesn't really behave like solder anymore. This isn't that bad, but it's uh, it's not nice to work with. Let's try getting some more on there, see if we can uh, get that to flow. It kind of behaves, it feels like a plastic rather than um, a metal. It wouldn't melt the same. There we go, that's that side out. I think, ah, there we are. It was just the, uh, it was just the stuff holding it. And as you can see, that one's done exactly the same. And it's blown out from the bottom, but if we have a look on the top, the vent seal on the top's not even domed at all. Right, that's them two out. And the rest round there doesn't look so bad. Um, obviously there's some heat damage. Let's, ch let's just check that resistor there, make sure that resistor's at least still a resistor. Yeah, it appears to be. Alright, we'll clear them holes out and we'll see if we've got some capacitors we can um, we can stick in there. I may even end up cheating here and drilling some new holes through, but we'll try and clear these first. That, oh, that cleared okay, that one. that one. That one's already clear so we've got one more to go. No, nope. let's try that one again. There we go, that's that clear. So we can stick some new capacitors in there and we can see, hopefully I've got something that's suitable. Ideally, I want to go up on the um, voltage as well. Although well, 25, it's only got 20, uh, 12 volt output, so 25 volts should be absolutely fine. We want some 470s. That's 100. I mean, I've got some 470s, but they're um, they're going to be overkill. They're not going to fit in the case. They're um, 50 volt rated. What's that one? That's another 470 at 50. Another 470 at 50. Come on here. That's 100 at 100. I've got lots of 220s. Come on, 470s. What's that? That's 100 at 100. 220 at 25. 100 at 100. This is good. This is not looking good, people. Looking like we might not have the um, the values that we need. Let's have a look in here. That's too high. Oh, we do have 100 UF at 400 volts. We do have something we could possibly replace that um, that smoother with. It's not the right kind though, but we could possibly bodge it in. What we need are these 470s. That's 10 volt a thousand, 220, 220. That one is 100, 100. This is not looking good. What's that? 470, 25. So that's we've got we've got one there that'll do. We want one more of them. Thousand, thousand, two thousand. That's two 
220 we could could we get away with that it would mean a little less um, smoothing we've got a we've got a 330 at 50 volts there that potentially we could use that it's a little on the bigger side though I don't know if the case would shut if we put that one in um, could use that would mean a little less um, smoothing on the output that's the only thing Cause that's all that these are they're um, smoothing for the output it's a pity we can't mm. oh that might fit if they'll fit um, put them away If they'll fit, then them two should do the job. They're both 470s. Uh, that's a 25 volt rated one. That's a um, 50 volt rated one. But that doesn't matter. They're both over 12 volts, so that's all that really matters. Um, it's if there's enough room in here to actually get them in, physically actually fit them, because they are a little bit bigger than uh, what's come out. Let's have a look. Well, that one will go in but the question is will this one go in and will we be able to get the case to um, close that is the main question I honestly don't think it will The, um, that's the top, this is the bottom, this is what we want because this will show us what room we've got oh we might get away with it we may get away with that if you look I think there might be enough room down that side to get that, uh, that big bugger in there The only thing is, that's the other problem. What temperature rating are these old um, capacitors? Let's have a quick look. Right, they're 105 degree these. As where um, these are 85s. Well, that's certainly 85 degrees, so that's no use. Um, the, also, as well as having a, um, a voltage rating and obviously capacitance, um, electrolytic capacitors like these also have a temperature um, rating. Now that one is. See, that one would be alright, that's 105 degree. That's the same as the ones we've taken out. However, that one, that's no use to us because that's only um, an 85 degree capacitor and obviously this thing does run mad hot so we can't be putting that in there it's um, it just wouldn't last let's see if we've got anything we can possibly salvage um, I don't want to spend any money on this um, let's see if we've got anything we could possibly salvage one from what have I got? no they're far too big um, just bear with me a minute folks, I'll be uh, right back. Okay, we got lucky. I had a rummage round in my um, scrap boards box and I managed to dig that out. That's the PSU out of an old um, LCD TV, probably an about 15 year old LCD TV or early one. Um, it's scrap, it's um, actually a blown board, um, it's one I replaced in a TV years ago, but I always keep things like this because you never know when parts are going to come in handy. And it's, in this case it has yielded us two um, 470 UF capacitors, I've just tested these and they're good. Uh, they're also rated at 35 volts uh, rather than 25, so um, they may have a little bit more, uh, little bit more life and they're not going to be run quite as close to the tolerances. Uh, the 105 degree so um, I'm going to stick these in and I mean obviously if this doesn't work I'm not going to spend a lot more time on this well I'm not going to spend any more time on this it can um, go straight in the bin 
and I'll uh, well I'll go straight in my scrap um, scrap boards box to be honest, and um, I'll find another power supply to run the uh, run the monitor. But uh, seeing as uh, seeing as um, I say I found some capacitors, it's not costing me anything apart from a little bit of time. We'll at least see if this uh, fixes it. I mean, if this gets us up to 12 volts, then I may change that um, change that cap as well. There's no way I'm going out and buying one. It's not worth it for this, but uh, I can perhaps bodge that one that I found that's electrically right, but uh, mechanically uh, not right. I'm sure I can probably uh, figure out a way of getting it in. Probably the only problem with using um, salvaged components is sometimes you struggle a bit with um, the fact that they will have a bit of solder on the legs. Alright, let's stick that in. Go on, get down there. Well, that one's alright, it's this one now. Yeah, it's just got a bit. There we go. Let's get that off there. That should be alright now. Let's see if we can get this in the board. Making sure we put it in the right way because that'd be bloody stupid to go to all this trouble and then uh, put the capacitor in the wrong way around. We'll put it in like that and we'll just try, in fact what we'll do, we'll just do a little trick I've, uh, I've been doing. We'll just use the old PCB drill and we'll just um, clean them holes out. Uh, just help really just help get the um, component through the hole just clean all the crud out that way in let's see if it goes in this time there we go that's much better isn't it? it's gone straight in that time and we can hopefully just get this one in I think we'll have to clean the legs off uh, yeah it's got a bit of, bit of solder still on the legs on this one we'll just give that a clean up like that there we go, and we'll straighten them up, like that, and hopefully that will go in, yes, yeah there we are, just solder them in place. There we are. In fact, we can just trim them legs down because they are a little on the uh, on the long side on that one. There we go. So it's got two new capacitors in there. In fact, we'll just connect that up to the capacitors um, checker and just see what value it's reading. It's not a perfect test, this, by any means, but uh, if we see something around 100 UF, at least we know it's not completely dead. And it'll do for the time being. Right, let's stick that on there. Let's have a look. It can take a little while with these larger um, value capacitors, I must admit. Right, what's it coming up at? Uh, 63 UF. Um... It's obviously, it's not happy, but uh, I think we're going to leave it in there for now. Like I said, the power supply was actually powering up. Um, yeah, it's, it's only slightly, slightly domed. It's not, um, it's not horrendous. Uh, let's, oh, we're going to have to do something about that on the bottom of the case as well, aren't we? 
can move you in there. And I've got something buzzing round in the workshop and I can't see what the hell it is. Hopefully you can't um, hear that too much because I'm sure that would be annoying on the um, on the recording. Right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do about that um, bit of, bit of uh, damage there. out that bit of damaged plastic because it's it's where them um, little resistors are there we go it's just the insulation that that's where it's uh, it's burnt a hole in it. We'll find something we can just stick under there just to maintain the integrity of the insulation. I'm sure I'll have something that's suitable. Although I'm not finding anything at the moment. We should have something we can use to um, insulate that. In fact, all, all I really need to do is just put some insulation underneath it, don't I? We've got some insulation tape. Ah, there we go. Take some um, insulation tape and we put some insulation tape. In fact, I've got something I know an even better idea than that. I'll take a piece of heat shrink and I cut a piece of heat shrink off like that. And I cut it down one side. like that. Take that bit off. And we open it out. And I put that, because it's much bigger than um, the hole I've cut out, right under like that. And there we go, that's insulated. And if it gets hot it will shrink down a little bit, but um, it's got an adhesive on the other side of this stuff, so as it gets hot it will stick in place. So let's uh, let's try putting this back in here, getting it connected back up, and seeing if we actually get any um, output from it. So let's put that in like that. That connector connects on there. That one connects on there. Let's put the screws back in. There we go. And we'll put this. In fact, if we have any paper here, I'm just going to. I presume it's electrolyte that's um, in here from that capacitor that exploded. Well, the two capacitors that exploded. So uh, we'll give that a quick clean in there. Just get any um, electrolyte out. And. Let's put it back together. So if it doesn't work, it's going to get dropped straight into the um, scrap box and get recycled into something else. But there still will be useful parts in this, I mean, like the connector there, the case itself, it's not too melted. 
let's um, put these clips back on. So that's the first one on. That looks right. Put this one on. They go on that way, don't they? Okay, that all seems back together. And put the uh, put the lid back on. At least then, if anything blows up, it's not going to uh, fly out. I don't think that clip's quite on right because the lid's not going there. Uh, lid's not going on. Something's not quite sitting right. What if I not put in in the right place? There's nothing on the bottom there, so that must be going in. It has to, it can only go in that way because that's where the cutout. Hang on, let me zoom you back out a bit because you're not seeing what I'm showing you here. So that's in that side like that. That can't, that's pushed in nice and tight. That sits there. That's what's sitting a bit high, I think. I wonder if it just needs a little, uh, little love tap. There we go, that's all it needed. We'll put the lid on. Then if it blows up, um, we don't send the capacitor uh, flying it, flying at me. I had that happen once with an old um, tantalium capacitor, and um, it missed me and my friend. In fact, it missed my eye by inches and flew over my friend's head. That was back when we was at school, and uh, we were trying to get an old 286 motherboard that we'd been given working. Right. I'll stick the screw. Like if it doesn't work now, I'm not taking it back apart again. I'm just going to throw it straight into the scrap box, and we'll uh, find something else to replace it with. But if it does work, at least it saves me um, getting another one or uh, digging another one out. Right. Let's. Uh We've got some power here for it. We'll show it the good old 240 volts. So I've got that connected up like that. Um, I'll connect this up to my uh, my bench meter, so we can just make sure see what voltage we get out of it. Like I said, when I tested it, when it was uh, in fault condition, it was giving out about three volts. And it should give out 12, so uh, we'll see what happens now. Okay, that's well connected up. Um, I'll put you on the um, meter so you can see what comes out of the meter. We'll set, we'll set that to voltage because we wouldn't want it set to killer on, so we play, put 12 volts through it. Set that to 100 volts, which should be absolutely fine. Um, and I will switch on. And we will see whether we get any voltage out of it or whether we get a um, a bang, a pop and a bang, which we may get. Anyway, right, let's see. Well, what have we got? It's not exactly that stable, is it? At least we've got 12 volts, about 12 volts coming out of it anyway. And the light, if we look here, the light on the top of the actual unit, I don't know if you can see that, is actually lit properly. Um, before it was pulsing, it was flashing like once every half second. So, it looks like we may actually have, um, may actually have got this thing working again. Ah, that's better. It was, <laughs> yeah, we are getting a good 12 volts out of it now. It was literally just because I'd, um, these wires I'd just, wrap that round we actually pull the wire like that and look at the meter yeah I'm getting a um, I'm getting a steady 12 volts yeah there 12.2 um, volts so that's not too bad so it looks like we may have made this um, looks like we may have made this PSU at least live for another day or two uh, I will look at finding something to um, to replace it long term but at least uh, 
and maybe I'll fi finish my um, match on um, Tiger Woods uh, PJ Tour 10. So uh, I'm going to leave this video here for now. I uh, <laughs> hope you didn't find that too boring. I mean, um, what's that? Nearly an hour of uh, someone fixing a power supply that's not worth fixing. But um, that we we just enjoy doing these things, don't we? We just in we don't like the defeatist attitude of oh it's broken throw it away it's um oh it's broken let's see if we can fix it that brings me on to i've been watching i do watch other people's youtube channels obviously and um i've been watching um i actually found him through uh gadget uk and um it's a channel called my mate vince and this is a guy with no electronics background, no engineering background or anything, but um, he will have a go at repairing just about anything. He's gone from trying to replay, repair PlayStation 4s to trying to repair like Rolex watches and you name it. it basically, if it's electronic or mechanical, it, this guy will have a go at trying to um, trying to fix it. I mean, like them hoverboard, skateboard things and all sorts, um, Nintendo DSs, you name it, he's had a go at trying to fix it. Another channel you might want to have a look at if uh, you enjoy the type of uh, mind <laughs> mental stuff that I get up to. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I, uh, like I say, I hope you enjoyed that little ramble. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.